the learning objectives of this module shall be to know who discover lysozyme, to learn the function of lysozyme and its mechanism of action, to identify the structure of lysozyme and to analyze the effect of lysozyme on bacteria. The discovery of the enzyme lysozyme was an example of serendipity in science at the hands of the famous bacteriologist Alexander Fleming in 1922. One day in his lab, while he was clearing out the clutter of glassware, he noticed something unusual on one of his agar culture plates with golden yellow colored colonies. There was a patch on these petri plates that did not show any growth of bacteria. Incidentally, this was the same patch onto which the mucus from his nasal secretions had fallen onto two weeks earlier. There was no growth of bacteria at all on this patch. This led him to conclude that there must be some ingredient in his mucus that has the property to kill bacteria. This ingredient was later given the name lysozyme, derived from lysis, which means to kill bacteria. Besides nasal secretions, it was found to be present in other bodily secretions such as tears and saliva. It was later found that hen egg white was a rich natural source of lysozyme. It is commonly known as hen egg white lysozyme which is the most well studied species of lysozyme whose mechanism is most well characterized. Lysozyme was the second protein and the first enzyme for which X-ray structure was determined at high resolution. This was elucidated by David Phillips in 1965 at the Royal Institution in London. The structural data hence obtained became the basis for deducing the mechanism of lysozyme which was proposed by David Phillips and came to be known as a Phillips mechanism. Now we'll talk about the structure of lysozyme. Hen egg white lysozyme is a single polypeptide containing enzyme of molecular weight 14.6 kilodaltons. It's composed of 129 amino acids. 816 residues within the enzyme are involved in the formation of four disulfide linkages. This can be seen in the figure shown on your screen. The protein is ellipsoidal in shape with dimensions 30 into 30 into 45 angstroms. The secondary structure of lysozyme is composed of several almost helical segments and a three-stranded anti-parallel beta sheet that lies one side of the active site. This folding of the protein is such that it makes a long and prominent cleft which forms a substrate binding site as it can accommodate a six sugar polysaccharide chain. A space filling model of lysozyme is shown on your screen. It also shows the substrate binding cleft. The yellow and red balls shown in the figure shows the important residues aspartate 52 and glutamate 35. Now we'll talk about the mechanism of action of lysozyme. Lysozyme exerts its action as an antibacterial agent by hydrolyzing the peptidoglycan layer of the bacterial cell wall. The peptidoglycan layer is composed of a polymer of alternating NAM and NANG residues that is N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetyl glucosamine residues linked together by beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages. Lysozyme acts to hydrolyze these beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages and catalyzes the reaction at a rate of 10 raised to the power 10 fold greater than that of the uncatalyzed reaction. The substrate binding cleft of the enzyme can accommodate a polysaccharide composed of as many as 6 sugar residues. If the six sugars are labeled A to F as shown in the figure on your screen, it is the beta 1,4 glycosidic bond that links the sugar residue D with the sugar residue E that is the exact site of attack by the enzyme. Specifically, it is the beta 1,4 glycosidic bond between the NAM residue at the fourth position and the NAG residue at the fifth position that is hydrolyzed by the enzyme. The figure on your screen shows you the 6 sugar polysaccharide unit. The residues A to F are shown and the bond cleaved by the lysozyme between residues D and E is also shown. The C6 and the O6 atoms of the D residue is in very close physical proximity to glutamine 57 
tryptophan 108 of the enzyme as well as to the acetoamido group of the residue C. This steric hindrance makes the binding of residue D to the enzyme very unstable. In order to accommodate the D residue, the sugar ring distorts itself such that these contacts are minimized. The D residue changes its conformation from the chair to the half chair form as shown in the figure on your screen. In other words, this results in shifting of the atoms C1, C2, C5 and O5 of the D residue to a coplanar arrangement and movement of the C6H2OH group from a sterically unfavorable equatorial position to the axial position where they no longer make such close contacts with the enzyme. Instead, this group now makes hydrogen bonds with the glutamine 57 residue of the enzyme. The hydrolysis of the glycosidic bond between the two sugar residues by lysozyme essentially involves the conversion of a hemiacetal to an acetal. Such a reaction proceeds via acid catalysis wherein protonation of a reactive oxygen atom is followed by cleavage of a CO bond and is accompanied by release of an alcohol and a carbocation. This is shown in the figure on your screen. The two amino acids in the enzyme that are in close proximity to the site of attack that is close to the D residue in the substrate binding pocket are glutamate 35 and aspartate 52. The figure on your screen shows you the proximity of the sugar residue D with aspartate 52 and glutamate 35 of the lysozyme backbone. The two amino acids lie on the opposite sides of the D residue and have very different environments. In the pH range between 3 and 8, which is a normal pH range for working of lysozyme, aspartate 52 residue which is in the polar environment remains unprotonated while the glutamine 35 which is in a non-polar environment remains in the protonated state. The reaction of lysozyme begins with the enzyme attaching itself to the bacterial cell wall. The 6 polysaccharide chain fits into the substrate binding cleft of the enzyme such that the conformation of the residue D is distorted from the chair to the half chair form. The figure on your screen shows you the catalytic reaction of hydrolysis of the glycosidic linkage by lysozyme. The aspartate 52 and the glutamate 35 residues are shown in this screen. You can see these two residues are placed on opposite sides of the sugar residue D. A proton transfer takes place from glutamate 35 to the oxygen 1 atom of the residue D a typical example of acid catalysis. This results in cleavage of the C1 oven bond and generation of the oxonium ion at the C1 of the residue D. Stabilization of this oxonium ion on the D ring is achieved in the following two ways. By resonance stabilization of the oxonium ion, resonance requires a participation of the C1, C2, C5 and O5 atoms making it necessary for all these atoms to be in the same plane which is facilitated by the distortion of the D residue into the half chair conformation. The figure on your screen shows you the resonance stabilization of the oxonium ion. It requires the atoms C1, C2, C5 and O5 to be coplanar. The oxonium ion is also stabilized by electrostatic interaction with the ionized carboxyl group of the nearby aspartate 52. The hydrolyzed E ring is now released with its attached polysaccharide unit generating a glycosyl enzyme intermediate. This is followed by an addition reaction by a water molecule onto the oxonium ion leading to reprotonation of the glutamate 35 residue release of the D residue with its attached polysaccharide and concomitant regeneration of the enzyme. The enzyme is now ready for another catalytic reaction. Now we'll summarize the various points covered in this module. Lysozyme is an enzyme found in various bodily secretions from nasal secretions to tears and saliva that serves as an antibacterial agent. 
lysozyme is an enzyme that cleaves the beta 1 4 glycosidic linkage between the NAM and NAG units of the peptidoglycan layer in the bacterial cell wall. The secondary structure of lysozyme supports the formation of a substrate binding cleft that binds a 6 sugar residue polysaccharide unit at a time. The main amino acid residues that participate in the enzyme's catalytic action are aspartate 52 and glutamate 35. The maximum activity of lysozyme is seen when aspartate 52 is in its basic or deprotonated form and glutamate 35 is in its acidic or protonated form.